So the next speaker is Mr. Siaubing Sheng. Please. <coughs> Thanks. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm Xiaobing Sheng from Kyuluven, Belgium. It's so honored to stand here to present our work. Today I will present you the, uh, about the iron loss prediction uh, based on the ar artificial intelligence algorithms. Uh, we use multi-layer perceptions today. <coughs> okay, uh, here I, ga I give you the outline. I will start my presentation from here. Uh, as far as we know that magnet components are massive and play a really important role in power electronic systems. But when it comes to the designer, uh, the iron loss is always complex and not totally soft. Normally, uh, for the history or state of art, uh, we use, uh, we use uh, core loss separation and steam mats equation families and beige curve based method. Okay, thank you. <coughs> but first, let's look into the steam mat equation for iron loss. It uh, products a combination of flux uh, density and the frequency. And uh, for the parameter k alpha beta, you can derive it, uh, them from the data sheets by manufacturer. But the problem is that normally when you use a certain material, the, uh, the parameter always stays constant. There is a problem, why? Because the iron loss always wires even uh, with the same material. But if you have different sizes, shapes, temperatures, the iron loss always different. So uh, considering this, first we propose uh, an automatic data collection setup. Basically, it's the, use your DC to connect everything wire the router, and uh, you tell your uh, computer, and the computer tell your DC voltage how, how high the voltage you need, and uh, give it to the full inverter. Here, we use a square wave excitation to your core. Then, uh, from your core, you have your uh, primary uh, primary uh, current waveform and uh, voltage waveform from secondary. Then to your oscilloscope, your oscilloscope collect all this uh, stuff and uh, calculate the, uh, the iron loss based on the waveform you collected. Uh, for us, we, uh, for our case, we use two specific uh, and popular used uh, course, nanos crystalline and the ferrets N87 with three sizes from uh, readers 50, 20, 25, and 16. And uh, based on our, our automatic uh, collection set, uh, one, I one data item we need is within uh, seven microseconds. And uh, overall, like one hour within one hour, you can collect uh, 26, over 26,000 data for your uh, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence based model to train your model and, <coughs> and, and uh, also use the, the further prediction and the validation. <coughs> uh, also, if we have data, it it's, could be interesting to do the data analyze. You can see that even with the with the same material, different sizes can lead to different core losses. And compared to the steam mats, our measured data, the value, uh, is it's, they have quite a big a gap at the, at the error. The maximum can hit to 37. Based on if you use steam mats equation to predict your core loss, th this can be, uh, can be a problem for the designers. Uh, so, <coughs> To, to consider that all the materials, sizes, frequency, flux density, and temperatures that all can uh, affect the core loss, how to consider all these uh, discrete parameters together, artificial intelligence can help us to learn that how these input parameters can affect uh, core losses. And 
Uh, then we choose one of the artificial intelligence multi-layer multi perceptions based. Uh, this is your input layer. We have, uh, for our case, we have five parameters. Of course, you, ha you can have more like DC bias uh, or more factors can possibly affect your core loss. And uh, for us, we choose five parameters to the imp as the input layers and uh, to to your hidden layer, then to your output. Uh, your output uh, is predicted colors. Uh, and uh, we apply back propagation. This is like a uh, forward. But uh, use use back propagation, you have your targeted, your training data, the exact data, then you have your loss function. Uh, for each function, you can have the gradients of the weights of each layers. With, with, uh, with respect of these uh, weights, you can back, uh, back, backwards to uh, adjust these weights based on the gradients of your loss function. Then uh, this can help us to uh, converge and train your artificial intelligence model quite fast and uh, behave really well and robust. Uh, for the input, we have uh, how we construct our data. We use one hot vector. You can have more, of course. Like if you uh, predict more material, you have more one zero zero. They are quite uh, discrete and not to take take up a lot of uh, a lot uh, <coughs> a lot of space in your computer. Like uh, then in total input data, uh, you have uh, materials and flux density, frequency core size and the temperatures, and the magnetic loss as your predicted, uh, predicted value of your out, uh, out layer. Based on our measured data, we train, the, we train this model, and you can see that even from the, like, within 10 or 20 iterations, it's already converged really well, and the relative error uh, decreased uh, sharply after a after few iterations. This means that uh, it behaves really robust. And the error histo histogram turns out that uh, with you divided your data into training, validation, and test, you test the data. Also, uh, also mainly, mainly, mainly the error histogram is in the uh, small, small error bugs. This means that your extra, uh, your new text data behaves really well also in this trained model. So here is more proof that uh, this is uh, the three data sets of uh, training data, validation data, and uh, target data. And uh, you have your predicted data and the targeted data, the coefficient, uh, uh, coefficient parameters is, is almost a one. This means that your predicted data is really close to your targeted data compared to the same as predictions. Well. Uh, to conclude our work, we propose the uh, artificial intelligence-based model, use backpropagation uh, uh, algorithm to train your model, and uh, based on our measurement data. For this one, we, we're covering more parameters like flux densities, frequency, sizes, different materials, and uh, uh, different temperatures. But uh, or how it can be used in the future actually is not our work. We can use it as a surrogate, more accurate surrogate model when it comes to design. When you need to calculate or predict your core loss uh, to your design, you can apply this as a surrogate model. Well, this is today's uh, presentation. Thank you, everyone.